West Tigers fans, on Saturday night, Saturday night, this happened. The Tigers have a big win, a resounding win under coach Benji Marshall. Tigers 32 to the Shark 6. And let's talk about that amazing night at Leichhardt Oval on another episode of the West Life Podcast. Welcome into another episode, a very special celebratory episode of the Westlight Podcast. Our beloved West Tigers getting the win at Lo- a packed Leichhardt Oval on Saturday night. My co-hosts are with me tonight. We were sitting, going like absolute madmen on Saturday night. We'll probably be absolute madmen again tonight. Seeing all of our live viewers. Uh, streaming in on the YouTubes and the Facebook Live. Welcome to all our, seeing lots of regulars and lots of new faces as well. And give us a follow at Westlife Pod on Instagram and Twitter if you haven't already. Uh, if you're listening to this on audio, give us a subscribe, a like, a share. Help us on the YouTube channel as well. We really want to get that uh, YouTube channel up to a thousand subs by the end of the season. If the West Tigers keep playing like this, I uh, feel like we can achieve that number. We were also presented, as always, by Holman Barnes Group, the best place to watch the game on Monday evening. Uh, who should I go to first? I'll go to Mr. Thompson. How are you? What are we, 48, nearly 48 hours since full-time on Saturday night? Is the blood still pumping? <laughs> yeah, g'day, Josh. G'day, Rob. G'day, everyone tuning in or listening in. I'm still absolutely buzzing, mate. That was a sensational night. Uh, great spending it with you blokes as well. Had an amazing time. I I still feel like it was a dream, but it wasn't. And here we are and ready to rip in and start the party. I've got to apologize to your brother as I am the worst person in the world when it comes to <laughs> high, high fives. I, I miss every time. I'm... I feel like I've got pretty good coordination. I can throw a footy all right. I can throw a cricket ball all right. I cannot, for the life of me, do a high five. And every time he came to uh, give us a high five at every try, I completely missed his hand and nearly hit him in the face. So um, sorry about that if he's listening. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> a high five. At the end of the day, it's just a bit of Seppo bullshit. The Windy's brought over in the cricket. Uh, speaking of uh, cool, like a West Indian Mr. Bashara coming in from the Red Room this evening. You, uh, as some may have seen in the photo, plenty of passion. Yeah, we were sitting together in the uh, Latcham Robinson stand on Saturday night, overlooking a sea of West Tiger. I would say maybe there was a fair amount of Sharkies fans, but just a sea of rugby league fans. And it was just an amazing night in a lead up of like had a oval being told that it's too old and run down and nobody will want to watch rugby league there. What is just, yeah, the haters, the West Tigers haters, everyone just put in their place, Rob. What a night. It was an amazing night. How are you, gentlemen? Hope everyone out there is buzzing like I still am. Uh, this isn't the Red Room tonight. This is a victory lounge. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk We're going to talk about a famous victory. And, and honestly, guys, I'm not overhyping this. It's, it's only one competition game. I get that. But in terms of what we're trying to achieve as a club, the standards we're trying to set, the culture we're trying to change, this, even if we win another God knows how many games, this is the most significant win we've ever had in like over a decade. So, mm. I, I, you know, I was just... You know, got there before the game, uh, waiting outside, seeing that sea of, you know, orange and black and white there in, in the line. And I uh, actually had a couple of blokes. I better give them a shout out. Uh, Morty and Jimmy, they came they came down from Brisbane just to watch the game. And I thought, man, how good is this? These blokes have come from Brisbane to watch the game. We got inside, sat on your seats, and I'm just thinking, we have to win this. Like, I don't know how we're going to win. I wasn't confident we were going to win at all. Didn't think we had a chance. But... The energy from the crowd, I think everyone just wanted this so badly and, and more than anyone, the players and the coaches, and we got the job done. And, 
wow, like what a victory, 32-6 to six against a team that won its first two games. We hadn't won our, our first, what, seven games last year. We hadn't won our first five mm. games the year before. These guys came sixth last year. They came second the year before on the minor premiership. They'd only conceded 18 points in two games, and they hadn't conceded a point in the second half of any of their games. So we came out and we showed them that this is our house and you're not winning. This is our house. So, yeah, really, really pumped, really excited, and, yeah, looking forward to this. We've cl- scored close to 100 points in our last two games at Leichhardt Oval, which is crazy. So Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was wow. just a, uh, yeah, a, an amazing, incredible night. Like like you said, only, I guess, fans of other teams is just, yeah, another who remembers a win in round three of a competition, but I honestly think this is the start of a new era and a new time for the West Tigers. I think the Benji Marshall era has begun, and I think there's a lot of belief running through the team, and it's not going to be the last win this year. We'll, we'll fly apart. I'm not saying we're going to win the premiership, not buying grand final tickets just yet, but I think this year is going to be much better than, uh, yeah, a lot of people have um, put us down for. So we'll it, get... It's um, just just before we go into it, it's really funny yep. how the how like us as Tigers fans, or me in particular, I went into that game on Saturday night just hoping we could, if we lost, which I expected us to, that we could keep it close, like a six-point loss or a 10-point loss at the most. Like that's respectable against a team that's, um, you know, undefeated and ha- coming off a couple of really good, strong seasons. But, and then... Yeah, like it's it's a bit sad when you've got a fan base thinking that, hey, let's just keep it close. Let's show improvement. But mm. to come out and do what we did and in the, the fashion that we did it, absolutely sensational. And, yeah. and Aaron, you know, you can just basically all, all the concerns that I was airing last week and like concerned about, like obviously if we did lose our first seven games or our first five games like the year before and the pressure builds up on Benji and can Benji coach and can the players play and, Will Stefano stay and will Ice one out and all this sort like it literally alleviated so many things for me. Even even if we do lose the next few games, we just couldn't have got started the year 0 and six. Like this was I'm Not just thinking, sure. where, where's the win gonna come from? That's why I feel this is so important and, and so significant. And you know, look, we'll talk about a lot of the, the stuff even off the field that I there's just a, a concerted effort to change that culture of the club and to and to make it better from everything, even just off the field. As great as we were on the field, even if we'd have lost, I saw so many things off the field that made me realise, wow, everyone's buying into this. You know, we are one, and, and we're just we're we're going to move in the right direction, and, and and good on everyone at the club. So I, I just think it's onwards and upwards. It doesn't mean we're going to play finals or anything like that. We may, we may not, but. All, a lot of concerns I had last week were just put to bed, and thank Christ for that. And our, our first two wins last year were by four and two points, and we were absolutely struggling to come even close to some of the teams we played before that. And to, for us to win this first game by more than 20 points shows something to the character of the team. And you think about the year before that too, when we didn't win for our first five games, we came out and we won two in a row both by a field goal each. And yes. for this team to win this first game of the season so early in the season shows that they've come such a long way since the team that we trotted out in the first six, eight rounds or whatever it was yeah. um, last season. Couldn't agree more. Big shout out. We'll obviously preview this game on Monday. Uh, not Monday. The, the, it's been played on Monday. We're going to preview this that the Monday, Easter Monday game on Wednesday evening. The best place to watch it. If you're not heading out, the three of us will be definitely be heading out to Combank Stadium to yell obscenities at the Parramatta Eels. But if you want, aren't heading out to the game, the best place to watch it live allowed on the big screen at West Ashfield. Or you can watch it at one of the other Holman Barnes venues, Croydon Sports, and our little favourite, the Markets Club. Uh, right near the markets at Flemington there. Good little club, great little screen of the, in the uh, TAB, the couch that we have watched games before as well. So, yeah, uh, the home of the West Tigers. For more information, go to uh, holmanbarnesgroup.com.au. And a big shout to Holman Barnes Group who have come on board and they're giving us a $50 dining voucher for the best comment. So we'll find out. The boys put their heads together today and picked... The best comments, shouts of the 100 and 
30 odd of you that submitted the forms for the player player voting. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll announce a winner of the $50 dining voucher later in the show. Right, we'll start with a bit of news and on Leichhardt Oval, Brent Reid put this out on Friday, I think, his opinion that Leichhardt Oval was not fit to host first grade rugby league and that kind of runs into Shane Richardson on James Graham's podcast talking about Leichhardt Oval. We talked about a lot of things. I've got a few clips and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, for that podcast in particular. But boys, Leichhardt Oval... On Saturday night, there's a lot been talked about it, but a packed house. I mean, the Sharks, there were a, a decent amount. Like when I got there, I said, I messaged Rob waiting. I said, there's a decent amount of Cronulla fans here. So there was maybe because blue is an easy color to see amongst orange. It was a bit of a, a contrast. But I mean, a lot of people I knew weren't even a mate of mine who's a Roosters fan. Shout Ronald, he came to the game. Um, I, I know the NRL Boombrookie host their Rabbitohs and Raiders fans. They were at the game. Like, it's just, it was just like a, a rugby league celebration. The guy in the queue, when I went off, went off to get my Pepsi Max and missed the start of the game because it took so long to to get, um, there was a guy in the queue with a Western Reds jersey. Like, it was just, there was a few people with Bulldogs jerseys who obviously come from Belmore. Rob, obviously, you've been going to Leichhardt Oval a lot longer than us, and obviously, the whole thing is it needs needs a bit of funding, needs a bit of work. But man, Saturday night, like I don't think anyone was thinking that. Everyone was just thinking how how good, especially when the West Tigers get a win. And as I'll throw to you, could be in the stats man about how good we play there. But Rob, Saturday night, Leichhardt Oval, it's there's nothing like it, is there? Well, I think I think maybe Sunday afternoon at Leichhardt's better, but okay, okay, yeah, any but, yeah, I, I wrote, yeah West any, Tigers any, win at Leichhardt. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll be straight up. If this game was at Acor or Allianz or somewhere like that, I'm probably watching it on TV. I, I don't, I don't like going to the big grounds. If it was a Campbelltown, I'd be there in a heartbeat. I love the superb suburban grounds. The, the, with the pros and and cons of Leichhardt Oval, I think they're all right. Like I get that. You know, you can't go to the bathroom or, or you know, you got a 15 or 20 minute wait to buy a beer or a soft drink or like you did or anything like that. I go there with that expectation. Now, it, it costs yeah. them money. It doesn't cost me money. I go there knowing I'm not going to go get food. I'm not going to go get, get drink. I'm going to I'm going to go to the bathroom before I jump in the car and go to the game. Like I know, I, I know what to expect there, and and I know like having sat on the other side, I, I gave my tickets to some friends that came down from Glenory, so they were sitting on the hillside. Uh, but I know, like, if you go on a Sunday afternoon, I mean, that's not, you know, you've got your sun, the sun in your eyes as well. Like, it's mm. it's just hard to watch and you're dripping sweat. And But you know what to expect. And for a lot of those people who go to the games, you know, they'll want to go to the Orange Grove Hotel before the game, have a couple of yeah. drinks, make the walk. It's, it's you know, like, I mean, we're not going to war or anything, guys, but it's like the most, you know, 5% of doing the Kokoda Trail. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That that's okay. just our thing. That's just like what we want to do. Like I park on the other side of City Westling. I love walking, walking up the 10, 15 minutes it takes and rubbing shoulders with everyone and saying hi to the people I, I know. And it's just it's just that it it it's like a warm-up. You know, you as you get mm. to the game, it you're building up, you, you the, it's just slowly you, you're soaking everything in and and you, it makes you look forward to it. And I went from thinking we had one percent chance of winning that game to buy ten by ten minutes before kickoff. That how are they going to stop us? Because if I'm feeling like this, if I'm feeling this amped up, mm. and how are the players and coaches going to be like? You know, they've got to get up for this game. So I get it. If you don't like it there, just don't go. We like no. I know it sounds stupid, but don't go. There was fifteen thousand nine hundred and ninety people that went mostly West Tigers fans who love it. And I guarantee you, if that game was at Combank, even though it's a good stadium, or if mm. it was Acor, they wouldn't have gone. It's just a shit atmosphere there. And 16,000 into an 80,000 stadium is going to make it 80% full, uh, 80% empty. So I get that it's got to be redone. I, I get from the corporate side of it, we don't have enough you know, space for sponsors where you can sell more boxes and make more money and all. I, I get all that and it's got to be fixed up. 
no doubt. But you know, I, I love it. I love it. I love Campbelltown. You know, I, I my look. I'm not looking too far ahead with the Leichhardt Oval stuff. My next concern for the West Tigers, win or lose, we need to pack out Campbelltown when we play St George. Okay, everyone that loves Leichhardt has to make that effort and and get down the M5 and go to Campbelltown. The train station is literally on the ground. There's just no excuse not to go whether you want to drive or whether you want to get public transport. So I would encourage everyone, you know, like if we make our home games a fortress, like we win half our home games, we're just about in the finals. So let's Mm -hmm. make it really hard for opposition teams to win and, and lift these players over the line like we did on Saturday night because the energy we had, guys, like we were down 6 nil, and and they had a lot of red zone attack. Like they could have gone to 12 nil, and, you know, a lot of Tigers teams, they fold up. Like Cronulla had so much red zone ball and we held them out. And and then, you know, then further to that, when we were winning, we just didn't want to let them score and give them consolation tries. Like there was a steely determination on Saturday night that I haven't seen before for a very long time. So I know we put a lot of points on the Cowboys last year, but we conceded 18 points or whatever it was, 22. I don't know what, what the Cowboys ended up with that night. But mm. this this really was a new era, guys. And it wasn't the bullshit one like after Madge got sacked or when we did the new badge or we mm. got 20,000 members, which isn't true and it's a new era. The new era started Saturday night. There was everything I saw on the field and off the field showed me that, you know, we, we played with belief. We played with strategy. We played a great style of footy, guys. Forget the scoreline. It was, you know, if it was on, we, we we did a lot of second phase play. We popped so many passes. It was not the team that I saw in Canberra. It was mm. absolutely not the team. And it was an 80-minute effort. And we did not have one bad player, which I can't remember saying that in many games about the West Tigers. So, look, mm. I, I, they can say what they want about Leichhardt Oval because obviously, like, it's getting a, a hell of a lot of clicks. If we can get some funding and fix it up, great. Uh, you know, because obviously they want to redo the Latch and Robinson stand, but I would not want to take games away from there till we have an, a, a definite long-term strategy, whether it be getting funding and rebuilding Campbelltown or whatever the case may be. I, I, I just don't want to be technically homeless, you know, and just have to go to a de facto home ground like Acor mm. or, or wherever, it, wherever it may be. But yeah, yep. anyway, that's, that's my take on Leichhardt, but who cares? We won on Saturday night. Loved every minute of it. If I had to hold it in my you know what, for the rest of the night, I wouldn't have cared. I would have held it till two in the morning. (laughs) But I don't need a toilet. I just need victories. The toilet, Uh, I mean, as as a male, the toilets, as long as you don't need to do number twos, I find the toilets, I'm in and out pretty quick as a male. Obviously, as a female, it's a very different experience going to a toilet. It's a a much slower process, hence hence women – women's bathrooms always have longer queues. And with a a child, they're even – harder i do know what it's like trying to find a toilet with a a toddler but as a male I, I, yeah it's the toilets aren't that hard as the as i said earlier like oval is the only ground the west tigers have a winning record against and surely there's a, been enough games played over different eras and different plays and that sort of thing it has there has to be and a lot of people saying oh like it's not a factor anymore rob touched on it a lot then how much the f- he was fired up coming into the ground. There has to be, and the players talk about it, the players of yesteryear and current, they say that Leichhardt Oval lifts them 5%. And against teams like the Sharks, they definitely look rattled on Saturday night. And it had to be part of, part of it was a Leichhardt factor. Yeah. Um, and at this point, I'll go back to one of my favourite stats. I think it was the – it might have been the 2018 or the 2019 uh, NRL season launch where they asked some of the captains there some questions. One of the questions they asked was, which ground do you least like going to play or which away ground do you least like going to play at? And Jonathan Thurston answered Leichhardt Oval because he was never able to win there. Thurston. Um, and that's my absolute favourite stat. Like, it is obvious to a lot of people and a lot of players – that Leichhardt is not a fun place to go when you're the away team and the crowd is absolutely amped up. I, I remember listening as I was leaving. Um, I, I chucked my earbuds in and listened on to the post-game coverage on Fox on my way out of the stadium on Saturday night. And after they got done with all the player interviews, they um, 
uh, Cooper Cronk, I think it was, said, and like like Art Oval is pumping, the Tigers have won. It's really great to see. Like, the atmosphere there the entire night was sensational. Rob touched on it as well. Um, the crowd stayed really in the game, uh, which I think kept the team in the game when Cronulla had all that early ball. It, it was just a really strong performance. And like you said, this is the only ground, home ground where we have a winning record at. Um, I think it's now 52 wins out of 94 games. So we're closing in on that 100th game and we're guaranteed to have a, a more than 50% record by the time we get to that 100th game, which is absolutely awesome. I love going and watching the Tigers at Leichhardt. It's my favorite place to play. And I said, I said to you guys earlier today, like one of my favorite sites is watching the Tigers play footy with a packed hill in the background when I'm watching mm. from the Latch and Robinson stand. It's so, yeah. so bloody. There's nothing cool. like it. Looking down on the plebs from your premium seats. Right, like I can talk. You were literally sitting in my seats. Uh, right, <laughs> on to Rich. Who's Richo talking on uh, James Graham's podcast? It was obviously before the game, but it was re- this was released last night. It's a good listen, but here's a clip. West's identity West. and be more... It's not the bit. West's identity. It's, it's funny, you know. Like, are they going to adopt West. more of a... a yep. Yeah. No, well, what yeah the, what adopt they, more what of they, a West they, identity. Well, no, I don't think they've got to adopt more of a West identity. They've got to adopt a West Tigers identity. We've been 25 years mm. as a joint venture. I don't want to talk about West and Balmain and we can go. And mm. it's like I've, we're getting really heavily involved with, okay, with the so players about uh, the West Tigers alumni, which has 276 people played first grade for, and have a number. I, I want to build the alumni. I don't, the other ones are great. I want to go on. But the reality is the more you focus on West Tigers. Now, who knows where we'll play because I can tell you this, that we'll play at the most commercially viable ground for us to grow to 30,000 members and to grow to, to the crowds and corporately and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, and, and at the end of the day, the Leichhardt and Campbelltown Councils have got to understand clearly that, you know, that we're only there for this year um, and, and that, you know, we need some assurances about, you know, you cannot, you know, we, we could fit, we've got 300 corporates on, 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 uh, on uh, um, Saturday night. We could fit six, 700 in there. So we're all well as like before, at like well, we, no, we couldn't fit. We need to fit. Mm. We could sell seven hundred. My point about it is that's double the amount of corporate you're getting in. Mm. You can only fit seventeen thousand people into the ground. Well, I'd like to think we're averaging seventeen thousand people every week, um, or twenty thousand, or twenty five thousand. What I'm trying to say is, mate, the West Tigers identity has, has the spread for us commercially has got to be out and taking into consideration the development areas of Campbelltown. Mm. That's why we're setting an office up there. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to play there. We'll play where we believe we can grow the club to the big and the West Tigers club to the most ability. Does that then look at the potential of more games at Campbelltown? And well, that, that looked over the next. You know, we've just put a strategic plan, which will come out next next week, which is signed by from the board this week. And a part of that talks about where we're going to play. That's mm. a decision we'll make based on the economics of the club. Where we want, we've already got a base where we train at. We'll be at Concord forever. Yeah. So it's you haven't got like St George. You're training here. You're training. There. We've got one base. Um, but you know, Leichhardt is just nowhere near the standard. It might be the eighth wonder of the world, but you know, even the, even the uh, you know the the, the sort of uh, um, the pyramids get cleaned from time to time and upgraded. And, and my point about it is, we can't continually ask. We can't grow our membership and fan base at a large rate if we don't provide the facilities they want. For, for, for females, mm. for kids, for, and all that sort of thing. So we're going to make decisions over the next period. I'm not saying where we will or won't play at this stage because we haven't done enough research in it, but it's clear in a strap plan that we'll be making calls about what's best for the club for the long term. And we've got the largest growth corporate area and area in Australia, in the south, in Australia, in the southwest there through Camden and up through that area. Rob, we've long preached on this show and I know a lot of people in the comments are saying, like Campbelltown, we can get Campbelltown like this. And we've said on the show before, we're big uh, supporters, despite you and I being our main background. We think Campbelltown should get the significant portion of the games. But, yeah, what do you make of all that from Richo? And as as a, as a punter, like, I get what he's saying with the corporate stuff, but as a, a punter, as I'm... Um, how excited the 16,000 of us, or maybe not the 1,000 Cronulla fans, but of all us West Tigers fans, 
their Saturday night. Like it's one of those magical nights of the year for us. And then they come out and to just say, look, what about all the, the corporate people who more than likely they don't have the emotional attachment to the West Tigers that we do. They're not the ones cheering crazy and doing poor high fives like we were on Saturday night. Like it's it's a working class man's game and I get like I'm I'm usually on the other end of this argument. I watch a lot of American sports and get the whole thing about pro sports and business and making money and it's gotta be it's 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 not nineteen eighty six anymore. It's not local footy. It's it's a fran- game of franchises and making billions of dollars. But I mean the majority of the money they make is from T V anyway. So really the ticket sales and that sort of thing are um a small small portion of it. And credit to Valandis. Valandis has come out and he's said he's a big supporter of uh, suburban grounds. But Rob, in terms of the corporate side of things, is there a, is there a way to have a balance? Is there a way we can we can make have a cake and eat it too by making money from corporates and the punters still having what they want? You have you have to make money from the corporates, Josh. I, I think Shane Richardson's in a really really tough spot because. Let's just say for the sake of the argument that we're going to play, you know, in the future, nine games at Campbelltown and three at Leichhardt. How do you get funding for Leichhardt Oval if you play three games there? Mm. So I, I I think we need other sports that can use Leichhardt Oval for their benefit as well. So we need more than more than, than the West Tigers to have a few games there. But, like, my ideal thing is for Campbelltown to get redeveloped. But he respectfully to Shane Richardson, he's running a poor bluff because I know he said he'll go anywhere – where it's viable to get 30,000 members. I'm not going to be a member if we're playing out of Liverpool, out of Canterbury's, Canterbury's surf. I'm not going to be a member if we're playing at Acor. I'm not going to be a member if we're playing at Allianz. I'm not going to be a member if we're playing it. I, I want I want a suburban ground. That's what I like to watch. And, you know, I mean, I can be a non-ticketed member and, and you get you get less money out of me or whatever. That's fine. But I, I just think he's in a tough spot. But he's trying to put pressure on both councils to, to try and do something. So I don't know what's going to come of it, but I, I think the other thing that's a little bit hard too, like if we do want to get that MacArthur area and play most of our games there, it's also pretty hard to have your practice facilities at Concord. Uh, so that's that's another thing as well. Like Concord's so far away from Campbelltown. So hmm. there's it's just a sort of dilemma, you know, conundrum, whatever you want to call it, that, you know, I'm sure Richardson, if anyone's going to figure it out, it's him. But it's a very, very tough balance because... You know, do you want to put bums on seats or not? And I, I just personally, I really don't enjoy the big big stadiums. But I'm sure that there are a lot of people that do enjoy the big stadiums. I, I just don't enjoy them, guys, unless they're packed out. And you're not going to pack out, you know, games like this. I, I think, um, you know, you put some numbers up last night, Josh. We won the premiership in 2005. Our mm. first game, our first game the very next year against St. George, I think it was a Saturday night, I was there. We got 27 or 28,000. So it was basically a third full, and we just won the comp. So what I was proud about the other night, and it shows you how much people love Leichhardt Oval, we've got back-to-back mm. wooden spoons. We've played like busted asses in the first two trials and the first game against Canberra where, you know, we've, we've had a, a significant, you know, loss, and we still nearly got 16,000 people, which were mostly West Tigers fans. They call it 14,000 West Tigers fans. And, you know, there's probably plenty watching at home and listening on the radio or whatever they do, you know, at work wherever so we've got a big fan base so we we can get the numbers if you make it a place that people want to go to but if you're going to redevelop Leichhardt I mean what we're going to play all our home games there I I don't think for our long-term sake that's the right thing to be doing I think we should be basing in the MacArthur area comment here from Ray saying we have a very blokey view of Leichhardt and that Richo's on point look at Richo I'm on a bother about playing the clip but he does actually mention he goes what about the women and the kids and part of me look uh, as a bloke obviously don't want to mansplain or talk on behalf of women but i know so many and how many of the females are in our comments tonight a lot of females that were at the ground on saturday evening obviously the toilets we already talked to- toilets is the big conversation when it comes around like oval it seems the toilets are an issue. Can we not just build some more 
fucking toilets? Like, how hard can it be? Like, food, um, I mentioned the food issues, and I, the NRL boom rookie guy, I look, the three of us weren't drinking. As doesn't drink, I don't drink much. And Rob, you said, you, yeah, didn't. No, um, I didn't drink, at all. Drink, drink either. So, like, lining up for a beer would take ages. That didn't affect us because we, we don't drink. But apparently, not all the bars were open. And like the food, of the, they must have known that the crowd was going to be pretty significant. To have, I look, sound sound like an elitist over in the Latcham Robinson sand. I only looking from afar, it looked like there might have been a donut truck and an ice cream van or something. In the age where there's a thousand different food trucks out there, could we not get like line the back of the hill? I, I could be wrong. I didn't see the back. Uh, of the Glove, Glover Street entrance, is that the one over the back? There might have been more there, but is there not a way that we can cater for those things for 16,000 people? And obviously, like parking's an issue. Parking's an issue for a core state, like a core stadium. You go to a big event at a core state, like it, it costs you 30 bucks to park at a core stadium in the car park. Like it, it's got its issues. As well, you want to get into the SFS um, or Allianz, rather. The car park there will cost you thirty bucks, and it takes six years to bloody get out of the thing after. Exactly. Like it, going to the footy is a challenge, and at the end of the day, you're competing with. It's so easy to get a KO. What's KO worth now? Thirty bucks a month to get HD footy on your TV. You got your your beer in your fridge and whatever, you can watch your three games in a row. You need a reason for someone to get off their couch, make an effort, no matter where the ground is, I, Like it's, it's an effort to deal with Sydney traffic, to deal with public transport. Like There's there's hurdles no matter where you go. You've got to appeal to people to get off the couch and go watch the footy. And Leichhardt Oval has that factor that it will – make people do that and they're not even west tigers fans i know like i said so many non-west tigers or sharks fans that went to the game saturday night and this blokey view and i get that and we're not saying we should play all games at like at oval it's a bit of a like it's a tough one like rob said they don't play enough games we don't play enough games there to justify being money being spent on it and they won't spend money on it like they won't spend money on it, so we won't play more games there. So it's kind of like a, um, yeah, a, a going round in circles with that. And look, three games, just three games a year, like we've been doing, would be fine. And bloke, I don't like the word blokey. Like I said, there's a lot of females there in a world where everything is like commercialized and. Like everything is just going one way. We're catering for every single, trying to make every single person happy. Is it that bad that we have a few nights a year where we can have a blokey night, like an adult's night? And I saw people, uh, I saw comments in here. Someone took their eight and 13. Yeah, Scott said on Facebook, he took his kids 16 and 12, first time at the footy, all the way from Coffs Harbour. They said it was the best <laughs> night of their lives. Like the and they're going to be fans of West Tigers for life. And look, maybe they would have gone to a core stadium and we would have put thirteen plus on the Sharks, and they would have said it was a great night as well. But there's got to be. Can we not just hold on to a little bit of the working class part of the rugby league and the the fun part and the like? We don't have to cater all the time to the things in the world. The, the way the world's going. Can we not just we're not we're not Josh, we're not saying it's up to scratch. I, I agree with what Ray's saying. Yeah. Like I know like you you know you said well you know you asked me earlier did you know did you have to go do a number two? No I didn't have to go number two. Why didn't I have to go do a number two? Because I'm too scared to eat before the game or too scared to eat at the game. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm serious. Like that so I, I get I get that it's not the right place for for that. But you know you go on the other hand if we have games at ACOR and I do want to get you know a hamburger and chips it's going to cost me 30 bucks. 
Yeah, just for and a, a ship. For, for, for a combo, that, for a combo like that, they've got great facilities there. But then it's, it's you yeah. know, like you said, thirty bucks for parking takes you an hour to get out of the place, unless you go by public transport and you got to change stations from you know uh, Strathfield Lincoln. And, Lincoln and all that sort mm. of stuff. I, I just, I just think it like there's everyone that's talking about Leichhardt, every opinion on Leichhardt, I think he's right. You either love it and accept it, or you hate it because you're right too, because it isn't for everyone and and there's just no winners in this right now i i, I don't I, I think we just can't solve this problem i i really don't i don't, I don't think we're ever going to solve this problem and it's a pity nothing was done about it years ago um you know council's got no money to do anything where gosh they've had 30 years to, to do something about this you know local government so i, I don't know I, I don't know but like from what shane richardson said i don't think we could even fit enough corporates in the existing grandstand so if we yeah. were to redo something, we'd actually actually redo a, a grandstand where you can fit more corporates in there, or maybe have more seats on the hill, or or do something. But I'm certainly not disagreeing with Ray. He might he might think we're saying it's a blokey view, but I'm actually agreeing that you know if if you've never been there before, then you're going to hate it. But you know, like I said with my analogy about walking up to the ground, I'm just thinking about you know like me as a little kid you know going up there with my parents or you know with my uncles or cousins or or whoever it's it's just more about the experience and it's it's about you know memories for me and i think you know rugby league loses a lot of its tradition so mm. you know if we can, if we can maintain a tradition i, I don't want to lose suburban grounds period like you know mm. Brook, brookvale's shit house i love going to brookvale <laughs> you know, mm. so many, i just like the suburban grounds i like i like being up among city at right on the fence where you can really feel you know the the hits and the collisions and everything like that you don't get that at acor you know so anyway look shane richardson's going to do the right thing i, I think we're spending too much time on this like hard oval stuff i want to talk about the yeah. game and, and and happy stuff oh that good uh Oh, good, good then, segue. Yeah, good 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 segue <laughs> uh, i just want to sh- yeah send out thoughts and uh, out to Ian Heads. The first book I ever read, I read when I was in year three, was Local Hero, The Wayne Pierce Story, and it was ghost written by Ian Heads. So, obviously, a big part of rugby league history in terms of yeah, writing about it. And yeah, literally the first adult book. I think I've read Goosebump books or something before that. But yeah, the first, first adult book I ever read, Local Hero, and I read it again as an adult. So, my favorite book, that's my Bible right there, Local Hero, The Wayne Pierce story so um yeah sending our love and thoughts to ian heads's family and yeah um r.i.p uh on to before we get on to more about the game shouts to our friends at mobile corp i always do this i bring up the ad and i'm not ready to read it our friends at mobile corp supporting us again in 2023 so mobile corp they support local businesses businesses by managing their it the networks and their mobile devices if you're a local business owner looking for a partner will take away the hassle of dealing with it it issues make sure you have cyber security in place handle all your mobile device needs and mobile corp can help mobile corp is a family-run business long-time supporter of the west tigers and reach out to Stephen and the team at Mobile Corp. Check out mobilecorp.com.au. It's mobilecorp.com.au. And a big thank you to them for supporting us again in 2024. Right, back to the game to talk about. And let's go try by try. And unfortunately, I have to start with, well, we're going in chronological order. So we'll start with the lonesome try that the Sharks scored. Malachi again, Brayley, Hazelton from Goulburn to the NRL with Cronulla. He's rolled over to score. Tom Hazelton into the match early for Toby Rudolph. You're talking about your cold heroes. He's gone straight at Caesar, gone past Caesar, gone through Utoi Kamanu, who's able to hold onto his legs, and off the back of that, quick play the ball, Brayley out. Some nice, hard, strong, direct. Yeah, would would have been nice to have money on him first try scorer. Would have paid a fair bit. But as, what are your thoughts on that Sharks try? And what were your feelings when the the Sharks went over first? Well, that was only about like ten to twelve minutes into the game, I think it was. And honestly, it was a really, yeah, it was a really good setup try from um, CSC for Talakai because that was off the back of his really strong run, uh, basically almost straight up the guts of the field and set up the line for a beautiful pass into Hazelton, who had only just come onto the field as well. 
um, to score under the post while we weren't ready. Well, basically, we weren't ready for him. It was just a really well set up and executed try. Glenn mentioned on YouTube here, Rob, the penalty against Olam, the spear tackle. We thought it was our orange and black and white goggles. Thought that was a bit rough. I felt like Olam lifted him, but I don't think, feel like he didn't drive him. I feel like the guy threw his head towards the ground. I guess you got a black and white call at a penalty. What are your thoughts on that one? Well, when we when we saw the replay on the ground, like well, at first we thought, what was that for? And we saw the replay. I mean, technically, you know, his legs do get horizontally above the ground, but you know, there was a tackle later in the first half that Appy Coruscant did on uh, Will Kennedy that like was basically like a full cartwheel. And I thought, wow, well, that's going to be a penalty. And and because Appy brought him down safely, uh, he did, didn't get penalised. So mm-hmm. look, you win some, you lose some. Uh, I just think the best thing about like I said earlier in the show, the best thing about this is, you know, we've, we've overcome adversity. You know, the Sharks get to 6-0 there, and I know you're going to get on to our next try, but the Sharks have a, a significant amount of ball where they could have gone to 12-0, and mm. we just we put a lot of pressure with our defence. There was so much intent with our defence. Like, we weren't just tackling. We were hurting people. You know, there were some really big shots from, you know, Justin Olam, Stefano Uta Ikemanu. There were quite a few really heavy hits that, you know, you, you could hear from from your seats in the grandstand. And mm. I, I, I just love what I saw in the boys. And there was just a steely resolve. They just weren't going to let Cronulla win Saturday night. So, mm. yeah, it was great to see. Yeah, normally, yeah. obviously, years of scar tissue normally would be worried, not <clears throat> scoring first. But there was, I definitely felt right from the start. And it's easy to say this. And I did tip us just just quietly, but right from the start, it did seem like the boys were out there with something to prove, and there's just an extra pep in their step. So, um, there, there was there was effort there, Josh. But you know, mm. like you start doubting yourself or doubting yourself, you know, sure. doubting your team at six nil. Like, you know, look, they're, they're only minor things, but you know, Lockie so, Galvin, I thought, Lockie Galvin put what I thought at the time was a great kick, and it just took a couple of extra bounces and yeah. went over over the dead ball line. They got a seven tackle set, and you're thinking, gee, yeah. we really need, we really needed to score first. Because there's not many times where the West Tigers can see the first try and come back and win. Um, mm. So there was just so much to like about this performance. But mm. we just we just played hard for 80 minutes and we just never gave up. Now, the, the trick is, can we do it every week? And I think the fact that they're human beings, you know, you just can't, you know, you can't be up every week. But boy, were, were we up on Saturday night. So it was, yeah, good to see. Well, just he, my this... thoughts on that tackle really quick. Um, I watched the replay on Sunday morning. And basically what it looked like to me was he tr- he was trying to get an offload away uh, before he ended up going to ground. And by twisting his body and like leaning over, he caused himself to lose his balance, which made the tackle look a whole lot worse than it probably actually was. Because I don't think he was going to go down face first in that instance it, or head first in that instance. It looked like um, from what Olam looked like he was going to do was kind of drive him backwards and mm. kind of back first into into the onto the ground, but because he got he was able to turn away to try and get to that offload, he he ended up making himself lose his balance, and that made him go like head first, which was what brought the penalty on. Uh, right. So luckily, not long after, or well, I think it was about what the five minutes later, this happened. He's uh, patrolling the right, the kick not high, but high enough to get a challenge on it, and probably The crowd is into the game. The Tigers have got their first. Caesar's kicking game to start this opening stanza. It was part of Tarpe. Did a great job. As West Tigers scoring tries off kicks, I feel like compared to other teams, we've always struggled with it. Either conceding tries to them or lack of scoring tries off them. This this caught me by surprise and yeah, felt Fatape did a great effort here, not getting it back to Papa. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I remember Rob, it might have been saying that he thought the kick was too shallow after it had gone up. He didn't think it had gone out far enough. But yeah, Fatape, a lot of credit to him there for what he was able to do. A lot of the time, you don't get enough um, hands on the ball to stop the momentum of the ball from going forward. The way he was able to bat it down literally just behind where his hands but hands were to awaiting Isaiah Papali'i. That was a really, really beautiful setup. And 
Papa scored probably one of the easiest tries he's ever scored. And just a quick little um, early go at the stats man segment here, or one of the two things I've got. But uh, Papa Lee, he doesn't score very many tries off of kicks. Normally he scores tries off of really hard bullocking runs. That was just mm. in his career, his third try he scored off a kick. Right. I don't even know how you looked that up. I swear. And two, two of them were for us, Aaron. Yeah. So he, he never scored like a try off a kick as a warrior or an eel. It's only been um, playing for us. There you go. Righto. Uh, Rob, will get your thoughts on the next try, which was about four minutes later. Oh, deception from Epi and the kid. Or rather, it's safer. Safer burrows in. Epi Corusel. Well, the Tigers pull rabbits out of hats. Find some sort of magic trick that he's done there because he fooled every one of the Cronulla defenders. Has been electric to start this game. Looks out the back, has a quick look, and the deception. Just a short ball to safe half. Rob, we're going to talk about Api Corusel a lot tonight, but yeah, just one of the many brilliant things he did on Saturday night. Yeah, I, f- I feel like I've said this a number of times, Josh, but We've seen Appy, what we think we've seen Appy Corusau's full array of tricks. And then he just does something else or has a game like he had on Saturday night. And you just think he can't get better than that. But then he does. He's had probably five or six of these games since he's come to the West Tigers, even in some, you know, losses. And you just think, how does he keep producing it, given the fact that he had gastro as well and, and wasn't feeling 100%? Um, look, no, you look. He got he got Safarth over the line. I don't think I don't think you'd back Safarth to do a hit up and, and get over the line. Like everyone was expecting the the block play there, but there I just noticed with our attack compared to the second half against Canberra, in particularly, there was a lot of set plans. There was a lot of getting to certain parts of the field before we executed plays. Even like obviously like with the benefit of watching a replay, I didn't even realize if you don't mind me touching on the previous try, Josh, the, sure. the Papaliki try. We put that kick up on the set on the second last tackle. It wasn't the last tackle. So we caught mm. Cronulla off guard. That was a deliberate ploy. We kicked it to Trindle, you know, and that was the first of many attacking kicks where we had, whether it was Fata Ape or Jareem Buller, just jumping up and trying to bat the ball back. And and I just thought there was a deliberate plan with everything we did in our attack, whether it was kicks, whether it was the offloading, even just the interchange of passing or Jareem Buller, you know, getting the ball from a kick at fullback and we we shuttled it you know a couple of passes and, and trying to get around the outside of Cronulla we did the unexpected because we've played such a very sort of boring mundane type of footy for a long time now and everything's been totally happy reliant but I just think it was a perfectly balanced game plan and it's easy to say after a win but the boys just went out there and had fun and they, and they did their job and you could actually see that you know we're like, as a fan, I've been sick of all the talk that, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we've heard that for 10 years, but it happened. Like, all mm. the stuff about how hard they've worked in the preseason, the standards they want to set, what we want to do, and just the fact that they conceded six points against a... I think Cronulla's got a really good attack normally. I just think they haven't been on all year, even though they've won two games. But, you know, we, we played with a lot of purpose. But, I mean, there's really not much to say about that Safarth try and look, I'll just give Safarth a shout out because we're not going to talk much about him. I bagged the crap out of him last week. I don't think he belonged in first grade. He was very lucky to keep his spot. Uh, no disrespect to him. This is typical Alex Safarth. We get one good game, three or four bad games. We need to see Alex Safarth do this every week. He's got to be consistent. We we we're, we've got a really light bench. We need him to be that Safarth, not the Safarth of the week before. So. Um, I hope Alex Safarth can keep that form up. But, yeah, we, we can have a whole podcast on what Appy did the other night, mate. It was absolutely unbelievable. Well, it got better. He did this next. So, I think they'd like penalty. I think they'd like shot at goal here. Oh, no, 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 they don't. All of the back of Coruscant, who has had a 10 out of 10 half. Appy Coruscant is having an absolute stormer. And he's passed to the former Storm centre to score the Tigers' third try. Shove your field goal 
Won't take another six. It was a late offload. He dived on the ball. His desperation. He comes out acting half. Gets under the tackle of Hazelton and supplies a beautiful offload for Olam, who's been in everything. It was the play, the play before, and the desperation to get on the ball off a late offload, and then to come up with a play like that. As I've a running joke on our Twitter account, Death Taxes and West Tigers conceding a try within five minutes of half time. Appy Corosau pouncing like that ball. He had no no business getting that ball. When that ball went back, I'm like, oh, Appy's going to, that's good. Appy's going to tackle a play here and they'll be stuck on their 30 for, yeah, for the last, I think it was the last tackle coming up next. But no, he, he, he got in there and got the ball and then did like just a textbook, beautiful little, like it was like a, a Jeff Tuvey or some like little hooker move that, yeah, it's just gorgeous. As a former playing little number nine myself, it um, that was beautiful to see. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Um, the best, one of the best things about the game that Appy had for us on Saturday night was all those little one percenters that he did, trying to carry the team on his back. And in the state that he was, like it was sensational. Obviously, we'll talk more about him later, but. A lot of the time, a player would want to try and get to the ball, but they'd just dive on it instead. Um, Appy dove on it, but he then got up and then tried to scoot away and managed to gain a few extra meters before having, obviously, that involvement later on where he ducked under a tackle to send Olam over. Yeah, we had no right scoring that try just before halftime. That, there was no way we were going to score. I, I thought we were going to go into halftime 12-6 up because... Like you said, the Sharks were about to get their kick away on the next tackle. We'd be down probably bet- between our goal line and our 10-meter line. Um, and by the end of that set, we we might have just had like one of those normal um, yardage sets just to try and make sure we got as far away from our line as we could, probably to the halfway line. And we'd get a kick away just before the halftime siren went. But no, instead, we end up getting the ball in really good field position thanks to Appy. And then he sets up a really great try for Justin Ollum to score on his club debut. Rob, any anything to add there before we go to the next try? Yeah, so we'll, to- well, we'll try, try and get as much of the Appy stuff out of the way as we go because otherwise mm. it's just going to pile up for later. But just remember too, he, he, he lost the ball over the line, you know, whether it was a strip mm. or not, I don't know, but earlier. So he could have had another try there. Um, but he was so exhausted after that try that, um, Aiden Caesar had to take the kick at goal. Like we you talk, like Aaron's talking about that, like that one percent effort. Like Nico Hines was in front of him when Cronulla knocked that ball backwards. Nico Hines was closer to the ball. He jostled around him. And as Aaron said, 95% of players would have just dived on the ball. He got the ball. And then half a minute later, you know, famously at Leichhardt, he does a Benny Elias and just ducks underneath players as as Benny used to do back in the day for Balmain. And puts Olam through, and I'm just thinking, wow, you know, we're a real chance here. Let's hope we're the first team to score after halftime. Hmm. Well, just after halftime, obviously, yeah, we weren't counting our chickens before they hatched. Just after halftime, this happened. Left foot kick. And get rid of Tyler. No one gets near it. It's on the fingertips. The Tigers are nowhere. We're going to play up. It's play up for Fatafi. Got an initial knock on from the Sharks ruled on field. Ooh, there it is there. Jareen yes. Buller's left hand yes. touches the ball and it goes forward into Braden Trindle. Yep. We have a decision. Okay. As when we're watching it, we have thought hard done by, but yeah, watching it back on TV today, Buller does knock it into the shoulder of a Sharky, which is unfortunate. But yeah, part of me was thinking, oh no, is this going to be one of those moments that it goes the other way? But we know, obviously, in hindsight, it didn't. A little bit unlucky there. Yeah, it's just one of those really unfortunate, minute knock-ons that happen sometimes where you're trying to take possession of a ball and it bumps the finger or the the, the thumbnail or some small part of the body of an opposition player, um, which, co- which constitutes a knock-on when they slow it down to incredibly 
minute deep like minute speeds and yeah it was it was really unfortunate that we didn't get that try but yeah like you said we saw in the replay that it was one of those ones that it had to be taken off us um for that reason but yeah it was a like an opportunity it would have been an opportunistic try and really mm. great for Fatape to get a uh, a try in just his second mm. NRL game but not to be but he'll get more opportunities this happened i believe in the next set Somehow Cronulla stopped him, tackle. but they've got a high tackle to do it. Crowd will go up, crowd will tell you the story. Boris Howe has kicked it, it's into the Keith Barn stand again, old Golden Boots. Rob, 14 point lead through tries. I started to believe here. Yeah, I, I kind of, I didn't think we were home, but I'm like, man, I, I can't see the West Tigers conceding three tries to this. Sharks team. Oh, it's never over, Josh. But you know, I, no, I admit, just felt a little bit, little bit more confident. Yeah, of course. We're all feeling confident, and I think you know there was about what thirty-four minutes left or thereabouts when we kicked that goal. And I probably yeah. looked. I probably asked you guys. You know, I don't know. I'm guessing 35 times. What does the clock say? What does the clock say? Yeah. For the for the rest of the game, Bren, is just that, Brendan is that, is that 27 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, I Brendan Brendan the, kept kept us updated. Yeah. yeah. I feel, so, feel sorry for the people sitting in front and behind us. To be honest, they they got their podcast <laughs> while they were they were watching the game. But um, yeah, no. Look, I, I we started believing then. I mean, I look, I was believing the whole way because, like I said, to come back from six nil and I I wanted to score first and. Obviously, that penalty goal gave us a three-score buffer. Um, and, you know, then from the ensuing kickoff, you know, we got a penalty against Safarth. And you can see Safarth wanted to go on with it. Like, that's how fired up mm. the boys were. But, look, there was just – I keep saying it, guys. There was there was a belief. There was – we played with purpose. We played with intent. We weren't going to lose Saturday night. It, looking back in hindsight, I didn't know that at the time. But, wow, just such a – such a dominant performance against a really good team that's, you know, like I said, came sixth last year. We didn't beat, you know, the Dolphins. We beat a semi-final team. Right, Left foot up. dig over the top. Here comes Galvin on the tower puller. Back goes Trendle. Oh. Trendle loses the ball. The Tigers have got it. Puller was right there. Beautiful little kick from Caesar. His kicking game tonight has been the difference. And Bullock, Galvin, some of their young Tyros, their young superstars. Let's play on. That's a try. Their composure, the guidance and direction. Just to be able to put the ball between the defensive line and the fullback, Kennedy. Trindle gets back but just unable to clean it up. As the kicking game, I don't think we've given it, given it enough love. Aiden C's obviously set up a try with a kick uh, first up for Papa, but the kicking game was sensational and something that we're not overly used to as West Tigers fans in recent history. Yeah, absolutely. I was a little bit worried at times, uh, particularly in the first half while we were trailing or while we were only 12-6 up, where it looked like some of um, Caesar's kicks weren't really going all that deep, but a lot of the kicks he did do were quality and a lot of them made it possible for the boys to chase. And they like, they chased a lot of kicks, not, not all of them, but they chased a fair few. And yeah, Caesar's kicking game was sensational and boy, oh boy, doesn't Jareem Buller like an opportunistic try at Leichhardt Oval. That's his second one there. Uh, anything to add on that before we do the cherry on top? One oh, look, I, I, I think that the part that got me the most was, you know, like with, with the kicking game was – look at our goal kicks, for example. We, we, we When do we have a perfect record with goal kicks? Okay, we put mm. so many attacking kicks up. But I think the thing I loved about the Buller try was we chased in numbers. We were a pack of Tigers. You know, mm. if, Buller, if Buller wasn't there, you know, Lockie Galvin was going to score. Isaiah Papali was going to score. There were three Tigers coming mm. at uh, Braden Trindle saying, you better get this ball, mate, or we're going to score a try. So there was, like I said, plenty of intent. A uh, great, great kicking game. One thing I do want to mention with the kicking game, and I think, I think the coaches and probably the players recognised it because there was a stoppage in play on the last tackle in the second half. I can't remember what minute it was, but Caesar was on the right hand side of the ruck, Lockie Galvin was on the left hand side of the ruck, and while there was a stoppage in play, they swapped sides, 
okay? Because I noticed in the first half when Caesar was kicking, he'd be on the open side but on the wrong side for a left footer. And it was the same for Lockie Galvin. I think that's something we've got to address in the future um, because, you know, they it just gave him a little bit less time. And obviously, you know, Cronulla were getting their starting sets about 30 metres out, as you'd mentioned, Josh. You know, Kennedy was getting it back and they were getting pretty decent field position only because I just thought the fact that they were playing on the wrong side of the ruck, we couldn't get really good kicks away. But they rectified that to a fair degree in the second half. And, yeah, after this one, this is when the, all that pale blue started filtering out of Leichhardt Oval. Manu, centre, Galvin gets his chance on to Buller. Buller off the left. Buller has scored. The Tigers. The Benji Marshall era starts a week late. The West Tigers not just winning, putting on a show. They are so good tonight. As is when the party officially started. Yep, it was at that point where we finally could settle back and think that we were finally going to win this game. But I think more important than that try was the defensive resolve of the team to not let any point, any more points in afterwards to mm. to keep the margin at third two six. I don't know if they necessarily tried to score more points after that, and that because that was around the time that Appy went off or a couple of minutes later. Um, but the team. It was yeah, just a really strong, solid effort. And I love that Jareem try. That I think that was a better try than the try he... Oh, we've lost him. we well, lost you. As? Well, as, as his turn for shit in it tonight. <laughs> yeah. But he, it. He's not he's not wrong there. Yeah, it, the, the try, obviously... An, it was an arsy try, the first bullet try, when someone... The Sharks should have cleaned it up and... Should have been yeah, but a goal line, goal line dropout, but you make your the own one luck. Percenters, Josh. They're the, they're the one percenters that you got to, you know, they're the things that go against us, you know. So it's good for us to be on that on that side of it. You know, there was a Cronulla player that came out like a shot out of a cannon. I guess he was expecting Buller to get the ball, uh, not Buller, uh, Justin Ollum, and he just, I think it was Will Kennedy or someone like that, and he just flew up and it just left a gaping hole for for Buller, and he went through, and then we could say, right, we're home. There's less than ten minutes to go. We're not we're not giving this one away, and and we could just yeah just sit back and enjoy the last Savor few it. minutes, yeah, which was absolutely absolutely beautiful. I mean, you're obviously not going to have any tape of it, but there was a Ronaldo Mulatalo. He looked like he was going to score. He was heading heading for the corner post. He ducked back inside and dead set, Josh. There were six Tigers mm. jerseys there. Like the effort there was incredible. So yeah, yeah, just 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 a wonderful night all round. Yeah, very very great night to be a West Tigers fan. Yeah, it's just. The heart, the tiger heart was there. It was amazing. Right on to your player ratings. Thank you to the 130 odd people that responded to this. It's always, yeah, we love the more the merrier to submit your thoughts on the game. And obviously, a lot of high numbers this week. So, ratings for Benji Marshall. So, 50% of people said a 10 out of 10. Uh, a quarter of the people said 9 out of 10. Uh, 20%. Eight out of ten. A few people said seven. Then one person, a couple of people said six. What are your thoughts on Benji's coaching in this one, Rob? Mate, I've given him twos and threes and all sorts of things. Mate, it's a ten out of ten. Um, this was a performance I didn't expect. And as I said, I if if we'd have ever if you told me before the game we're going to win this game, I would have said we're going to win. I don't know, thirteen, twelve, because we can't score points. Hopefully Cronulla are off. You know, maybe we'll just get a fluky try off a kick or something like that. And we scored 32 points. So 10 out of 10 for Benji. And I just want to let the listeners know why there's more to the 10 out of 10 stuff. So pre-game, like all the all the staff, whether it was Benji, uh, the, the players that weren't playing, like your Adam Dewey's and your Brent Nadens, et cetera, they're all donning the dark pants, the white mm, shirt, gray the, gray, the, gray, the gray jacket. They mm. formed their own little guard of honour as, as the players ran out. Bud Sullivan, who was on the bench for the first half and well, most of the second half as well, at halftime, he ran out. He backslapped every one of his teammates. Benji's looking like a million dollars in his suit. There was just an air of professionalism. You can see we're trying to change the culture in, in so many ways, and there's so many positive things. Like to have the players that weren't playing there 
just be there and, and just form that little guard of honour, said, you know what, we're all in this together. Whether we're playing or whether we're not playing, we're one club, we're one unit, we're out to win. And and that's that's where all these things are going to matter later on, you know. And if we'd have lost the game, I was still impressed because you can see there's so many different things. You know, we might talk about that team song later. They're trying to change the culture by even changing the song because that song hasn't been great for us, whatever we used to sing before. Mm. So we, we're trying to do everything we can to make things better. And, and I can only applaud that. And, and I've had massive doubts about Benji and one win doesn't change everything, but it certainly has opened my eyes to the fact that he can coach because in my heart of hearts, I think, you know, a club shouldn't be that like, we shouldn't be there as a club to make Benji a better coach. Benji Marshall is the coach. He needs to make us a better club. So we're going to only improve as Benji improves. And for Benji to improve, he's got to make our players improve. And and we saw, you know, some marked improvement the other night. And, man, it's it's exciting times, guys. You know, like we've got a, we got a tough game against Para this week. and and But I, I can go into games now knowing that, you know what, if we play our best, we can win. We didn't win by barging. We didn't win by them making too many mistakes. We, we threw the ball around when we needed to. We offloaded when we needed to. We kicked when we needed to. We played a good game. And, and, and now I have some belief that we can actually win games when we're on, not when other teams are off. So good times ahead, boys, and excited, excited. The new era has arrived, and, and congratulations. I think Benji's the first ever part-time coach to win an NRL game as well. So well done to Benji mm-hmm. for that. <laughs> There's a good comment about that later on. But, um, yeah, as any thoughts on Benji? I just – I rated him an eight, but that's only because I'm more thinking the long term. Uh, it wasn't just based on the game plan and everything like that for the weekend. But I that win and the way we went about it and the way the team speaks about him and the way he uh, sounded in his press conference, which I think you've got a little bit later on um, – I real I'm really starting to lean a lot more into the optimism that Benji is the right man for this job and he's going to be able to bring this team out of the doldrums and honestly it all already looks like we're starting to move our way out of there a little bit. Things look a lot more optimistic, not necessarily for this year, but that would be great. Um, but moving forward it does seem like there is a lot more optimism around Tiger Town. Uh moving on to player ratings, just saw Kim long uh Loyal listener, Kim said, sorry, Josh, I prefer the player rating system, rating the players out of 10. What do you boys think? So th- I've changed it this year to just ticking every player you thought played well. I, I thought it was a-, a more efficient, quicker system. Do you pre- do you boys prefer giving the players, thinking about player by player going one out of 10? I Look, I'm happy it's, to it's hear very, feedback. It's, it's an easy, easy to change. It's very rare, Josh, but given the way we played the other night, I agree with Kim because I'll, I'll tell you straight up, I didn't fill out the form because we didn't have a bad player. So I couldn't say this bloke played good and this bloke didn't play good. They, we had 17 players that did their job. So, I mean, you know, Sullivan didn't get much time. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I don't think there was one bad player. So hmm. for me to tick, everyone played well, everyone didn't play well. Yeah, I, I think probably the rating system is better. I, I like the fact that we're doing a 3-2-1, like in terms of what Aaron and I are doing. Um, so I, I like that personally. But, yeah, if you, it's probably good. I mean, to tell you what, they're def, obviously Appy would get a 10, but there would be so many 9s and so many 8s this week if hmm. we were using that scoring system. I found it excruciating to try and pick hmm. my third best player. I honestly could have put five or six players as our as our third best player. Guys, even, even guys that we didn't see, like Alex Twal came off with, with some sort of head bin thing or whatever, and I'm only singling him out because no one's going to mention him. He was outstanding. He ran he, – his leg speed was better than last week. He was offloading balls. He gave us good go forward. And I didn't even notice he was missing. That's how well the rest of the team were playing. So I just thought everyone chipped in. Everyone did their job. Shouts to the attacking coach and defensive coach as well to concede six points. And let's face it, they scored in the 13th or 14th minute. So we held them out for the last 67 minutes of the game. When have the West Tigers ever done that? Ever. I, I can't remember. Uh, Elaine, it's, it's a big bag here. Carla says you like this system. Elaine prefers the old system. The, the issue with one to tens, I guess, is what is an eight to someone might not be 
might not be an eight. Like someone might give a 10. Someone might not have played perfect, whereas someone would be like, well, they made one error. I'll give them a nine. So kind of, I guess people would have different thoughts on, um, yeah. We'll, we'll discuss it during the week. I'm happy to change it back. But this system kind of allows, because in the end, all the percentages kind of work out. So we've got literally 100% votes for Bula, uh, Coruscant, and Olam. So you can essentially say they got 10 out of 10s and then, uh, ninety six point nine for Caesar and Galvin, so you call it a, a nine point seven. So Stefano nine point three with a ninety three percent there. Uh, who else is up there? And then down to Safarth eighty two percent, which is surprising. I guess he's scored. He played great. He played great. He played great. For Tape, sorry, Alex. Uh, big supporter of the show, follows us on Instagram. Uh, 8.34, so 82.9% for, for Tarpe. Bateman not far behind, so equivalent of an 8.1 there. Uh, yeah, so it kind of does end up working out to almost being a 10 out of a 10 rating. But, yeah, for people to not say that Galvin and Caesar played well today that's that's crazy but um yeah 300 percent in there as yeah i'm really not surprised i I went through and did this myself because i still like doing this myself um because i can then refer obviously when i come on the show i can refer to what i did and how and i like seeing how what i think compares to how the rest of the the people who listen in think um so i i ticked every player i could not i couldn't not tick every player like I, I said to my dad earlier today, the reason why, even for those who didn't play all that many minutes, is because defensively, in particular, that's a whole team effort where you don't concede just six points if any cog in the wheel isn't turning the way it's supposed to do. So every player, no matter how long of a stint they played, contributed to us only conceding that six points in the 12th minute and then nothing after that. Even, yeah, Jaden Sullivan, who only played, I think it was... Uh, 13, 14 minutes or something like that. Twelve who played an 18-minute stint at the um, end of the first half. And I'll go back to what Rob said. I had no idea at all in the second half as well that he wasn't playing. Um, the the first I saw of him was when I was watching the pregame afterwards before I left in the car to head back home um, when they were singing the team song was that he was already in his suit. And I'm like, hang on, when did that happen? So I've been trying to find things all weekend and all day today to work out what happened to Twole. And I only just learned like just before we went live that it was a, a head knock that he copped in the first half mm. and they decided to play it a little bit more cautious with him, which I think it was a really smart decision considering what happened a couple of years ago. But yeah, I, I can't single out a player who didn't play well. It was a massive, incredible team effort and I'm just, I'm glad we were there to witness it. Uh, so also in the poll is players that, thought did not play well. Charlie Staines, he got a fair whack in this. So 30, 30, only 47 people so responded to this part of the poll. So 36 out of 47 people who ticked in this said that, um, yeah, 36 whacks against Ch- Charlie Staines in this one. Rob, is that a bit harsh? I thought he... I, 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 think, it, I think it's very harsh. I, I said last week, Charlie Staines is that Alex Johnson type of player where... You know, we don't we don't put him into space to score tries. I, I thought some of his sit ups were really good. One in particular in the first half, he got us over the, the advantage line. I actually made a point to watch Charlie Staines in the replay because I knew people would be bagging him. What they've got to remember too, guys, when we played Canberra last week, um, you know, like Fata Ape was on the left hand side and his his partner was uh Junior Tupu. Like last week he had Stafford Tower as his centre partner. This is the first time Fata Ape and Charlie Staines have been on the on the on the right hand side together, and obviously they probably you know noticed that knock on where it looked like he might have scored. Where, to be honest, watching the TV replay, he was probably covered. Combinations are going to take time, and and that's one of the even better things about this win. There are so many guys that haven't played together, and and they're only having their first or second games together. We will only get better as we get used to each other. Like definitely, the pass was on from Fata Ape. Staines wasn't expecting it. And that's because they're strangers, mate. They haven't played a game together till Saturday night. So I just think we're being a little bit harsh. 
Um, and, you know, while we're mentioning him, I, I just give a shout out to Tupu as well. Like, I, I still don't think he knows how to put himself in the right spots to receive the ball to score a try. But God, he did some tackle busts the other night. He was an absolute handful coming out of our area. Ran over the top of people a lot like Talakai did for Cronulla. I, I thought our wingers did all right. Quick, can Charlie Sainz be better or more perfect? Yeah, but I mean, he's got to get he's got to get more chances as well. I uh, I think I for, did forgot to mention Fanua Polo. He had ninety point seven, so a nine point one in this one as well. He was incredible. As uh, apologies to Noons if you're listening, but. You also small. didn't mention Isaiah Papali'i, who had one less vote than Stefano. So, uh, and he was the same percentage. What's crazy is two people downvoted Isaiah Papali'i. Like, yeah, yeah I, I don't know how. My, I'm not going to publicly shame you by looking up the spreadsheet, but <laughs> what, what, what's going on there? He was incredible. There, there was just, one just, play. There's one play. Sorry, as there's one play. Papali was just handed the ball. It was like under sevens. Like Caesar gives him the ball and just says, "Do something with this." And Papali just takes on three blokes, hmm. gets his right arm free, and, and pops it out to the right. I'm just thinking, we're not even putting him in space. We're not making it easy for Papali. Where he's just got to literally create on his own. Like there was not a bad player. John Bateman, who was so ill-disciplined the week before, he he just cut all the crap out of his game and played hard. Bolle, you've mentioned. Steph. Steph was a heat-seeking missile in defence. He was killing people with some of those hits he was doing. He ran the ball like a machine. There were so many good players. You know, Appy, obviously, the standout. Uh, guys, you remember when... Um, do you remember when Galvin passed the ball to Bateman and he and he dropped it in the first half and Katoa ran away? We had two blokes chasing him and Buller picks him up before halfway. Like, Buller is deceptively quick. There was just effort all around. But you look at every player on that team and the common word with everyone there is effort. Everyone put in the effort. And it was just such a, a performance that we're not used to, guys. Everyone played well. It was a, a team, true team performance. Uh, moving on to sorry, Josh, just back on the just back on the players sorry, yes. that didn't play well. Question. Yeah, um, I think that's probably this is probably the main uh, issue with doing the the survey this way because as I think it was one hundred and thirty something people uh, answered the question of who did play well, and um, just forty seven people did like this part. So the numbers can look a little bit misleading here because of the mm. fact that only 47 people actually mm. ticked any players whatsoever, because obviously if I go through it, I don't answer the question. It's not going to consider it a response to the question. Yeah. Um, so unless you've got like an option for no one played bad, then um, like seeing Charlie Staines here, he got 36% of the 47 responses, which is 76.6%, uh, but that's not 76.6% of the people who did the entire survey. So but yeah. I, I do think, like, yeah, it was a really good performance. You, you, you could hardly say anything wrong about any players. And just one more thing on Jaden Sullivan really quickly. Uh, he had a really good game, in my opinion, because he uh, he caught a ball on the full from Nico Hines that he definitely wouldn't have been expecting to come in his direction, considering it was a kick in general play that was supposed to go for yardage down the field. So good on him for catching that one. This saw, uh, literally, ironically, saw Emmanuel saying that I ignore all the slice ledgers and stuff that you guys are saying in the comments. Emmanuel, I'm literally trying to I'm I'm a male. We're talking about males and females earlier. I can't multitask. I'm trying to read comments, get the next <laughs> slide ready, get the ads ready, all sorts of things. I'm trying to multitask. So the boys look, I the boys are the star star of this show and I just uh push pushing the buttons and telling them where to go. So Apologies, as if I did miss something that you said there that went over my head. Right on to our three, two, one. Who was man of the match? 89% of people said Appy Corosau. So, in terms of our three, two, one, um, so that determines so that this year we're doing the Rob and Az are going to pick a three, two, one, and I'll determine by those percentages who gets a three, two, one. Obviously, with 300%, so I used Appy Corosau at the tiebreaker there. Everyone said that he was the man of the match, so he gets the three. And I'm going to have to give 1.5 to Olam and Buller, who also got the 100%. Was it Olam and Buller? Did I get that right? Buller and... 
Yeah, just not. Yeah, Oliver Buller got 100% in that. So they get 1.5 each. I'm going to split the uh, the two and one there. Uh, Rob, who's your 3 2 1 this week? Well, you know, Captain Obvious, all of us, I think, with Happy Coruscant. <laughs> so that was that was my three. I, I honestly thought Steph was a clear second pick. I, that's the best game he's ever played for the club. Uh, we need our props going forward, doing what they do. Uh, there was I've never seen him play like that. He li- he literally lived up to his potential, both in attack and defence. So I gave him two. The one was an absolute head scratcher. At first, I was thinking Buller, you know, because everything he did from not just his tries. I know he I know he dropped a ball backwards. He looked a bit shaky under a couple of high balls, but obviously scored the try, the chase that I mentioned on Katoa. And then I thought, you know, you know what? I better give it to Olam because it's his first game for the club. He was killing people in defence. He was, you know, running as hard as he could, earned us that penalty that, that gave us a three-score lead. But then I thought, you know what? None of this happens without a steering wheel. And I just wanted to emphasise how important it is to have a general, even if he's older and slower and whatever. I, th- I thought Aiden Caesar, hmm. uh, I, I put him down as my third pick just because I just wanted to point out what, it, what how important it is to have a halfback. I love the fact that Aiden Caesar ran the ball a couple of times in the first half. So... You know, the, the defence had to think that he was an option to actually run the ball. I loved I loved his kicking game, particularly in the second half where Buller could get under those high kicks and bat it back. So I, I just think he organised the play really well. It was his first, you know, starting game for the club. Uh, and it's his first game with Galvin as well. So, look, there's so many so many good players. Uh, you know, Gal, Galvin played well. I mean, he made a couple of errors, but he played well as well. It was just a really hard pick. You could have had five or six players get that one point. But in the end, I opted for Aiden Caesar. But um, I think Appy, you know, the way Appy's going, this is not only leading to, you know, player of the year with us, but... I don't know, guys. I I think Appy Corusau is going to have to be in the Origin team, and and we're going to have be having a backup hooker during Origin play. He mm. he's that good. He he can't be left out. He's he's absolutely invaluable for us. And just don't forget his goal kicking, guys. I don't think he's missed a goal kick yet, has he? So he he's he's getting us in high percentages with the goal kicks, and we've got Aiden Caesar as a backup goal kicker now. That's been mm. one of our weaknesses. We've lost so many games, you know, over the last seven or eight years just from bad goal kicking. S- seems like something we don't have to worry about right now. Scoring near the post helps too. Uh, As what have you got? Uh, Same as Rob for my three and my two. Uh, Stefano, I thought Stefano was absolutely sensational. I noticed a friend of the show, uh, Sam from Wobble and Jaw Sports, who we had on for the Cowboys preview last year. um, Shout out to Sam. Yep, shout out Sam. Asking us if we had talked about Stefano yet, and I, I, I said, I said to him that we hadn't, but yeah, he was, he was absolutely sensational, Stefano. One of his best games by far. He ran hard, and his first stint, I feel, really set up the game for the team as a whole. A uh, lot of really good, strong runs, a lot of good, strong tackles. He didn't really put a foot wrong, so yeah, easy two points for me. And I gave my one point to Olam. Um, it was a really, really tough decision working out who to give the one to, same as Rob, because so many players could have deserved it. But uh, two line breaks, a try... Four tackle breaks, um, really solid defensive game as well. Uh, yeah, I had to give it to him. And like I said to you guys on the night, I think he's uh, one of the few players that comes from one of the really successful teams and uh, gets and got the fans on side straight away by what was a, a really, really strong performance. Uh, yeah, Stefano, I said in the preseason, Stefano, not to toot my own horn, but I predicted that Stefano was in for a big years. Even in the trials, even though we got smacked in the trials, he I thought Stefano he, he he looked awesome. He's he's he, on a different level this year. He's he's obviously had a great off season because he future club captain if he sticks around. We might be missing him for origin too, guys, the way he's going. Uh yeah. well that means that means he can't opt out of his contract too, doesn't it? Even better. Yeah. Uh, so the three, two, one. Appy running away with it. Seventeen. Uh, Lockie Galvin is on seven. Steph on five. Two point five each for Olam and Buller, and one for Caesar and Papa. On to stats, man, and the stats from this game. What do you got for us this week, Mister Moneyball? So I touched on one of them earlier, which was uh, Papa Lee's record of not really scoring tries off kicks until he came to us. My other one is uh, a stat that I've 
just discovered that is probably one of my favorite stats in a game to look at is post-contact meters because of the ability you have to cart your team downfield. And I think what made me realize this was how good we were um, with Luciano Leilua dragging three or four blokes for about 10, 15 down, meters down the field um, while they were trying to bring him down when he played for us and how important that was. And I wanted to single out the two players that I thought really stepped up in that department. They were Stefano, 86 post-contact metres from 17 carries, and Fanua Pole, uh, 67 post-contact metres from 17 carries. I thought both of them were sensational in that department and a massive reason of why we were able to make the metres that we did and put in the performance that we did. Josh, can I mention Samuela Fainu as well? Like you can mention whoever you like, man. What a especially weapon. at West Tigers. What what a weapon! And you know, we said it pre-season when we were talking about you know how we're going to go and preview and if we're any chance to you know make finals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We said there had to be guys that we haven't heard of before, haven't played first grade before, to step up and and do things. And we found that you know with Lockie Galvin, you know Samuela Fainu, man. What like seriously, the Fainus could have their own NRL team. They are so talented. The, you know, they're, they're just elite in everything they do. And then obviously, look, it's only early days, but let's hope Fata Ape can sort of do those performances that he did the other night because there's three blokes that we wouldn't have thought were, were Buckley's of playing first grade last year. And, and they're really, you know, making significant contributions to the team. So I just kind of wanted to mention the guys that, you know, we don't often highlight. I mean, Samuel Lafayne, who's probably our 10th best player on the night, but he just did really well. And and we, we need that bench to be be rock solid. I'm still not sold on Sullivan on the bench. Definitely not sold. I want to, I don't know how we'll go in a, in a hooking role for a, for a decent stint, but that's we're, we're talking good things tonight. We don't want to talk about negative stuff. I'll just add on um, Sam there as well, Rob. I think he's really got the potential of being one of the sneaky good uh, new signings, not just for the Tigers, but across the whole NRL. Like people are saying, Brooks is light years ahead to be the best signing at a new club for Manly. Um, but honestly, if he's able to continue to keep his head on his shoulders and um, like stay in the game and not lose his head at all, I think, and based on what he's done in his first two games, uh, I think he has a really good chance of being one of the top signings of the year at any club. Um, he's already off to a pretty bloody good start, in my opinion. Agreed. Uh, on to some stats for this game. So 53% possession for the boys. Uh, completion rates uh, 86% for us, so 38 out of 44. Sharkies, absolutely awful as 67%, 25 out of 37. They were, they were absolute dog shit. Yeah, they kept shooting themselves in the foot. And I have a feeling the two kicks out of the full from Nico contribute to um, errors because I don't think they – I think for a, a kick to be considered a completion, it has to be caught or, like, something at the other end of the field. So I don't think those ones count for a completion. So, yeah, they just kept shooting themselves in the foot after what was a really strong start from them that looked like they could have had us in real deep trouble. But, yeah, once they started to – make their mistakes, we capitalised and we never really gave them a chance to get back into the game. Uh, good one here, Rob. Post-contact metres, 631 to 512. We'll get into player stats soon, but a lot of that was Steph. Yeah, look, Steph was amazing. Uh, look, I, I just saw a, a different intent with our forward pack. Like like all of, Every time we watched a, a Tigers game last year, and particularly in the trials, I guess the trials were a bit of a warm-up, but we just saw no enthusiasm in trying to break the line. We just basically like taking the tackles, trying to get a quick play the ball where, as we saw the other night, I think from our first penalty, uh, David Clemmer took a hit, up, a hit up and we ended up losing the ball. But the intent was there from the start to offload the ball or run over your opponent and make some post-contact metres. So it was just great to see, guys. I, I just, you know, it was a complete performance. Absolutely all-round complete performance. And... Honestly, we should be like getting upset with Appy Coruscant because, like, I think Stefano had a ten out of ten game, which means Appy had a fifteen because you mm -hmm. just can't you just can't be doing that to the rest of your team and making and being such a god. Hundred uh, percent. Miss tackles thirty eight a piece, so eighty six percent for our boys there. The defense, as it was, 
we talked about it a lot already, but yeah, it's just not what we're used to with the West Tigers. Yeah, the first half in particular, I believe we only missed nine tackles. So that first stint was really, really solid. And I have a feeling a lot of those later missed tackles came in the back like 10 minutes of the game where they actually started to try and get a little bit of a roll on, um, where they started to make some decent meters downfield, uh, breaks down the sideline. I think that was where we started to miss a few. But yeah, overall, the defense was rock solid to only concede that one try and then to not let them score any points um, for the rest of the game. Real testament to what Benji and the rest of the coaching staff have been working on in the offseason. Obviously, we all had our questions after the first game in Canberra, and rightly so, but they've really turned it around and backed up um, all the talk from the preseason, and they're looking a lot better now. Uh, 16 errors for the Sharkies, only six for us. I mean, six, probably... Yeah, I mean, you don't expect perfection, but that's not too bad. 5-2 penalty count in our favour. The referee knew where he was, Roberto. We got one pretty early in the game. Yeah, we did. Uh, look, the ref the ref was all right. I mean, you know, the video ref, I really thought Fata Ape had scored that try. But, you know, watching the replay, I mean, obviously at home, obviously I realised it wasn't a try. But, yeah, overall, uh, look, that that's where, you know, you need that home crowd putting pressure on the refs and... And, you know, but like, again, I think that's more to do also with the hustle our players did. You know, we, Aaron was talking about, you know, kick, kicks out on the full from Nico Hines. Like, you know, Johnny Bateman was putting pressure on Nico Hines. Nico Hines, I've never I actually never seen him play worse. He just looked like he did not want to be there that night. Uh, you know, the way Abby picked up that loose ball against him, I, I thought it was one of Nico Hines' worst games that I've ever seen. Mm. Um, and hopefully he does that every time he plays the mighty West Tigers. Mm-hmm. Hundred uh, percent offloads, fifteen to seven. So plenty. I feel like a lot of them came a bit later, but yeah, it did seem like the ball popped out a lot more, a lot more in the ruck this week. As yeah, I think I remember seeing when I was watching the replay at one point in the game, we had thirteen offloads to their one, and one of the things we've really struggled to do in recent years is wrap up the ball like that because. Um, offloading is one of the best ways to get some second phase play uh, to because you've obviously got a team that's probably gone back to form the the defensive line again for the next tackle. Um, and then you've obviously, when you get that offload away, they have to come back up at you again to tackle you. So really good chance of making a lot of easy meters off of the offloads. And to be able to stop the Sharks from getting the ball away with some of the big forwards they have and the the speed they have in their in their outside backs. It was a really strong effort from the team. And um, uh, and like contrary to that, to actually be able to get our own offloads away as well um, while still restricting theirs, really, really good performance. Hmm, 100%. Uh, meters gains a few individual player stats here. So Steph, 177. He was a machine all night. But Justin Ollum, only one meter behind that with 176. Rob, Man, like, I would not want to tackle this bloke. He's, like, literally like a, a ton of bricks running at the yeah, defensive line. I, I wouldn't want to tackle our left centre, and I wouldn't want to tackle the Cronulla left centre. They, they were both incredible. But, yeah, I, I can see your numbers there. You've got 132. Who's the third guy there? I can't That's remember. That's uh, Pole. Pole. Well, I, I, just an, just another rap for Appy Corusau. If he... If he got those meters back that he was that were taken off for the mutual infringement, yeah. I think Appy, Appy Coruscant would have been about 130 meters as well. Um, we we got to look after Appy guys. He can't he can't be doing those sort of minutes every week or or 2024. He's he's going to be an old man. So I, mm. I just hope we can we can get some really good contribution from Sullivan. But yeah, the the meters gained out, outstanding. How, how does a, a a left center make those sort of meters in his first game against a really good team? So well, yeah. well done to Justin Ollum for for almost pipping Steph. Leader and Nanny Man with two line breaks as well as unbelievable this guy. Yeah, he he was brilliant. I think one of those line breaks comes from the try, even though he was technically halfway through the line already. Uh, but yeah, he's really strong. He's a really hard ball runner. He's like a Fiji and freight train. I think that's what I'm going to refer to him <laughs> as now. Papua New Guinea. And, and that that other line. Papua New break, Guinean. I'm... Yeah, that's that is that too. <laughs> That, that other line break is probably the highlight of my night. And just, I think, hopefully, 
will set the tone for the next decade. That was when Lockie Galvin went between two players, got his arms free and popped the ball to Justin Ollum, who went on a long break before linking up with Junior Tupu. So that, that honestly, that like when I saw Galvin do that, I'm just like, oh man, if we, if we, it's a bit like when you watch Benji as a kid thinking, man, I hope this guy's with us for the next 15 years. That's, Mm -hmm. that's how I feel about Lockie Galvin. I 100%, yeah, definitely agree. Yeah, I feel like we haven't given Galvin enough love in this because statistically he yeah, didn't light it up. But, man, this kid, he's a footballer. Like he, I, I expect it already, Josh. I expect him yeah. to be like, that's how good he is. I'm just, like, mm-hmm. I know he's going to make the odd mistake. Like, you know, the, I mean, like, like I said, he's only just forming combinations. Like that drop ball from Bateman. Like, I think if Bateman was not standing flat and hitting the line, I think it was a good pass from Galvin. But, and then we mentioned the grubber kick that went dead in goal for the seven tackle set. He's going to make some mistakes or or not execute perfectly, but he does so many things. Like he's a handful for the opposition, and he just plays what he sees. I loved his post game interview that I got to watch at about one thirty in the morning Sunday morning uh, after I got home. Uh, he just he just looks like a happy kid, a absolute Mister Natural in in terms of being a footballer. So. Uh, man, every club's going to want to want to lock him up. So I, I, I just love the fact that he, he loves the, the Tigers. And the good thing with these young kids coming through, guys, and, the, and this is another tick for Benji, they all love Benji. So if Benji can coach, which we see he does, um, they're not going to want to go anywhere. They idolise this guy. He, he's a god to them. Uh, 15 hit-ups for Pole. We've already yeah, given him plenty of love. Tackle breaks. Uh, Tupo was leader there of eight and seven for Steph as well. Yeah, Tupo, yeah, one of the better games he's had for the club as. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of those tackle breaks come from uh, carries when he's uh, running the ball back. And the the good thing about that sort of performance was the fact that I, I'd say Cronulla are probably tops a top six team when it comes to the quality and ability of their outside backs and to to get some of those carries he did against trying to return the ball against those guys, uh, credit to him. Really, really good. Uh, Lockie Galvin, three offloads. So it's weird for a 5'8 to lead the team in offloads. But uh, Appy <laughs> our four, 42 tackles and only two miss. Probably 32 and two miss and 31 each for Pole and Johnny Bateman. Appy Corosal, I mean, We've said so many great things about him, but defensively, he was unbelievable as well. God, we haven't even done the Benji Marshall presser yet. We're 100 minutes into it. <laughs> hey, it's our ninth <laughs> win in three seasons. Let's yeah, I know. It's going to be... Out of Milk it. Milk. Uh, Drink it all in. Righto. What do I have from Benji Marshall? Um, while I'm looking for that, as any more thoughts on who have we discussed there? Johnny Bateman. I uh, I think John's game was really really strong as well. It he's one of those players where he he's kind of got to keep his head on his shoulders. But in saying that, I'd like the side of him where he's trying to get under the skin of the opposition players, like we saw in Canberra. Obviously, he had a bit of a relationship with a lot of the guys over there, and. Um, probably got a little bit carried away at times, but in this game, he just really knuckled down, got to work and put, and did a really strong performance for the team. Um, played great, good carries. Um, yeah. Vice captain to Appy. I think he was the one who made the second captain's challenge when Appy was 30 meters uh, downfield and struggling so, and he couldn't get back. So I think he made that captain's challenge as well. Uh, we might just skip the Benji presser with that far in. He didn't really have it. Um, other than yeah, nice things to say it was a about very Appy. Short one, Josh, by the way, it was a very short yeah. Press as well, like two and a half minutes or something. It was yeah, yeah. like three minutes. Uh, boys, and expecting we'll preview the game on Wednesday night for next week. But would you make any changes to this team, Rob? Look, I've, I'm not going to lie, I would, but I mean, I mean, you can't after such a beautiful victory like that. I definitely wouldn't have Sullivan on the bench. Uh, I think poor old Jakey Simpkin got a head knock as well uh, over the weekend, so I don't know if Jake Simpkin's going to be available. We need to look after Appy. We need, mm-hmm. we need a dummy half that can tackle more than anything, and I would have preferred Jake Simpkin. I'm wondering if the club's a bit concerned about Talon De Silva's size or if they just want to 
just give him time to, to develop a bit more before they give him more first grade. But, you know, Solomon's going to have to come on and, and, and play a lot more minutes than he did the other night if, you know, whether, you know, to keep Appy doing what he did because, you know, we, we need we need Appy guys. Like, Appy won that game, like, literally in that last seven or eight minutes before halftime. He absolutely imposed his will, you know, like, hunting down a ball and then ducking under a player to put on through. We, we need we need a fit Coruscant or we're absolutely screwed. So uh, I don't expect any changes, but yeah, would I like a change? I definitely do, but it's not going to happen. Tom Smith on Facebook. Obviously, you mentioned Tbali with the head knock as, so that might be a change for next week. Tom Smith on Facebook saying, See, you reckon Sione Fainu in for Tbali? Yeah, that's, that's all I'm expecting as well. Um, probably wouldn't make any unforced changes other than potentially bringing in another hooker um, in the place of Sullivan. But if if we're going to, I think, to get the best out of Appy, we need to see him playing what we said we, he should play last year, which is a good 30-minute stint at the start of the game, rest him for 10 minutes either side of halftime and then bring him on for the last 30 so you get a really strong 60 minutes out of him. And I think that's what's going to bring the best out of Appy, giving him that break in the middle of the game. But yeah, uh, I, I would like to see Sione Fainu, Sione Fainu uh, come in for Twal. If we do need to make that change, I, I would think that um, Sione and Sam Weller in the same side could uh, could be quite interesting mm. viewing against the, the Parramatta forward pack. Yeah, I stand corrected, guys, but I think Sione Fainu has, was seen in a moon boot. So I don't know oh, if he's he? going to okay. be available for selection at all. So okay. uh, yeah, we're, same. we're definitely testing our forward depth, uh, you know, but I... Yeah, hopefully Twally's right. Maybe that's why Twally was in a in a suit before halftime. Maybe maybe he will be right to play next week. Let's hope so. We need him. Matt, in the other way I see that going, then maybe Matamua comes in mm-hmm. um, to potentially come into lock and move Pole to prop. Or I don't. You'd probably have to do some sort of little shuffle around there, but that might be where they go instead if Twally's not available. We'll find out. We'll talk about it on Wednesday night. Right, our best comments from the player poll uh, form. So, shouts to, again. Thank you to everyone who entered. Stuart York said, wearing my jersey around Dublin with pride today in four-degree weather. Good on you. Top of the morning to you, Stuart. <laughs> I was wearing my singlet proudly at the Easter show around yesterday. So many t- people, I reckon I had about nine or ten guys come up to me and start talking footy. So it was just the vibes just after a Tigers win. You can't beat it. Uh, right, here is our comment, voted our best comment of the week. Week. So Kim, uh, if you can slide into our D- DMs and I'll get your details and I'll pass them on to Wes Ashfield. They're going to keep your details at the front desk because you've won a $50 dining voucher for Wes Ashfield. Uh, she said every player played well from one to seventeen. Olam was a huge. What well, Olam was huge as Caesar, as was Caesar. God, I've got to read it right. If she's the comment of the week, was huge as was Caesar coming into the team. Appy just keeps on going. I've bagged Bateman in the past, but he just he just concentrated on playing footy. Defense was fantastic. A great win, and everyone knew their role. We just have to continue this, and we'll build into a very good side. Uh, summed it up perfectly. Exactly. There. Kim, yep. So, yeah, just shoot, shoot us at any of the socials or podcasts at westlife.com and we'll um, pass it on to Wes Ashfield. Big thank you for them for, yeah. So, if you want to enter next week, keep an eye out for the form after full time after the Eels game. Uh, Scott says, greatest game in the last 12 years. Leaders led and the kids showed us the future. Really well, coach showing that if we defend well, the attack will come. Phil Rogers, Appy can marry my daughter anytime he wants to. <laughs> Lance Shepard, did that really happen? Am I dreaming? It did, Lance, it, um, but it felt like a dream. Daniel Perry said, anyone know when grand final tickets go on sale? I haven't been to a grand finals in 2005, so Just, no just buy them off the St. George supporters that are getting rid of theirs. <laughs> Connor Noons, of course, he said, Tigers win win games of pole at 13. They lose when they shuffle him. Look, he's not that wrong there. Uh, Adam Ryaluski, he said, we won the game, honestly, and we'll win more games if we repeat that same game plan. Wasn't anything flashy and lucky that won us the game. Steve said, I'm not used to Tigers players having rugby league IQ. Caesar Olam Appy provide what's been lacking for 10 years. 
Uh, Joe go. Joe R said, been waiting for this for some time. Let's hope they can follow it up next week and week after that and week after that, et cetera, et cetera. Fuck off, and uh, NRL 360, Paul Kent and your fellow clowns. You all make me sick. Uh, Adam said, whole team played well. Not a single dud for the night. Keep the same team list next week. So refreshing seeing props on our players on the TV coverage. Benji, hand, Benji handled himself with the most praise and hearing Appy was sick coming in and playing how he was inspiring. What's this new song though in the sheds? We're going to play the, that at the end of the um, episode tonight. Go Tigers, says Adam. But I don't think we even mentioned the gastric that Appy I had think I as well. That. I okay. mentioned it at the start. Look, as we've already learned that I don't listen to you guys enough. I noticed that. During I've the noticed show. that quite a bit. Kenny said, great great intensity and we're in the hunt for the whole game. Unlike previous seasons, it even wins. Keep drinking the Kool-Aid boys up the fucking Mighty Tigers. I thought drinking the Kool-Aid meant committing suicide, but obviously Kenny means something else <laughs> there. Uh, Perro said, Appy's efforts are rubbing off on the rest of the club. That's leadership right there. Riff Raff said, how we managed to win this game with a crooked player, manager, CEO, a part-time coach at a dilapidated home ground. That should be condemned. Uh, it's beyond me. Good on you, Riff Raff. Riff Raff, always good for a laugh. Uh, oh, Eddard dude. said, special mention to Samuela Fainu. His efforts in kick chase pressure and pressure from Barker were outstanding tonight. His support play on line breaks also top notch. He really worried me in the Warriors trial when he gave away multiple penalties. He's controlled, totally controlled himself since and just focused on playing great footy for us. It was great seeing so many smiles at everyone's faces tonight. Calling back to the comment of mine you read out last week where I said, we might be pleasantly surprised this year. It feels great to have only waited round one, one round to feel it. Lyle Elliott said, about time for a new fan petition. Let's vote to keep Leichhardt Oval alive. Yeah, if that petition comes along, I'll sign it. Uh, Shane Coet, I've never witnessed a West Tigers game where every player played well. It probably has been, but it's been a while. Uh, Tom Lyons, Appy for Daily M, Stefano for New South Wales, Polly, best young forward in the game, Olam Centre of the Year, Buller fullback of the year, Stain's most underrated player at the club, IPAP is back. Uh, ben said, Caesar is making me a believer. The kicking game was unbelievable. Appy, phenomenal. Uh, when I have gastro, I'm the biggest sook. I won't get out of bed. Bloke had gastro and played unbelievably. <laughs> Imagine if he was healthy. Actually, I had gastro when we beat the Panthers on that origin week at Leichhardt. It's the only Leichhardt game. So maybe gastro and Leichhardt goes together with the Tigers Josh. win. Just on Caesar, I'll, I'll give you a breath before you read out the next comments. Um, just on Caesar, I've been reliably told that um, the club did not think he would get through a full game last week against Canberra, hence why he was put on the bench. Uh, their, their team thought he'd only get 25, 30 minutes out at best, which is kind of why I thought he shouldn't have been there to start with, you know, had we got an early injury. But for anyone wondering why we didn't start Caesar last week, that was the reason. Okay. Uh Ned says the true Tigers team of the past 10 years will drop their bundle this week against Para. Fingers crossed. Uh, uh, TF said to see your captain collapse on the sideline after playing for 80 minutes, I would follow that man onto the beaches of Gallipoli. <laughs> now, that's uh, a great comment. Well, why didn't I see that comment? Josh G, bit of a long one here. First time I've ever been in the corporate box at Leichhardt, my mate snagged a couple of tickets for me and some mates, and it's safe to say we relished every bit of it. Four whimsical drunk teenagers claiming free beers and the prestigious Barry O'Farrell, Scott Prince, and Pat Richards, Liam Fulton, walk into the box. What do you get? Absolutely effing chaos. Uh, I think the greatest thing being young as a Tigers fan is wearing the jersey, the amount of older fans coming up to you, sympathizing about how much hardship you've gone through. To support this team is something I don't think any one of us has ever experienced with any other team in the NRL, let alone another sport. This fan base is so much larger than we realise. Walking into the star cast after a win is like you're, you're the prince of Cambridge. I couldn't walk <laughs> 50 metres without someone screaming up the tigers. It got to the point where I had to wear my jacket over it as I simply couldn't escape it. Safe Love to it. say we were probably blacklisted from the box as we were 
by far the only young group of lads and were absolutely stunned by the presence of Tigers royalty. Getting a group selfie with Barry and Scott Prince wasn't on my calendar. Streaming our heads off at every hit up a night to remember. What a night, Josh D. Famous victory, boys. Famous victory. Uh, our tips from last week, I got seven. The boys didn't. They only got five. Um, that's all we really right. need to say about that one. I tip the Tigers. You boys didn't have the faith. You're just going to keep on bragging, aren't you, Josh? Until I'm not losing, and then we won't mention the tips at all. <laughs> um, actually, I'm tied first now in the Westlife comp, just saying. Uh, the New South Wales Cup, the boys went down. The Jets scored with four minutes ago, and... Uh, there's a field goal in there as well. They kicked the field goal last. Was it a last minute field goal? I didn't actually see the game. I was at the no show. idea. Yeah, yeah last or second last minute. They lost yeah late in the game. The Tommy Radonikus Cup. Uh, the Cup side are sitting eleventh now in the standings. Uh, Harold Matt's Tigers went down thirty to four. Magpies beat the Roosters thirty two twenty two in SG Ball. The Tigers lost to Manly 36 to 10, so pretty similar to Harold Matz in the Magpies. They got pretty convincingly beaten by the Roosters. The thing that sucks about the SG balls, we've got first graders that could play in SG ball. So if we could send our young kids back down to ball, we'd probably be smashing it there. But Harold Matz, they're flying the flag. They're on top of the table. Go the uh, Harold Matz boys, looking like we might get another premiership. Their Tasha Gale, they got up 26 8 over the Rab. No, I think I've actually missed. Did I... Is that right? Did they play the Rabbitohs? 26 yeah, yeah, 8. They the okay, 38 0. Um, it threw me off because it was a different team to the others. Uh, Lisa Fiola got up 38 to blot. So, big week, uh, big weekend for the girls. Nice work. Uh, Tasha Gale, we're sitting in ninth place as well. Of course, we are fifth place for the Lisa Fiola girls. So, again, the younger uh, of that one, yeah, flying the flag for the club. Andrew John's Cup boys went down 20 to 12 to the Central Coast Roosters in the Andrew John's Cup. So, yeah, condolences to the MacArthur West Tigers in the Andrew John's Cup. So, that season is finished. Congrats to the Central Coast Roosters. What a shame my hometown's been infiltrated by that disgusting club. But anyway, right, super chat chats for the night. I saw a few come in. Uh, Shane Coet sent us five bucks. Good on you, Shane. Olam, enough said. What a change to that shit back line he made on Saturday night. Absolutely. He was incredible. Gussie Harris. It's not a show without a Gussie Harris super chat. Uh, celebrate good times. Come on. What a difference it makes to the days. Massive love to all good Tiger humans. That was a quality side side we beat as well. That's a lie, Gussie. You texted me before the game that you thought on paper we were way better on paper. Now you're calling it a quality side. You can't have your cake and eat it too, but appreciate <laughs> it. The post game as well. Very yeah, happy. Pre- Very pre- appreciate the five bucks though, buddy. Uh, Brandon W is throwing us eight bucks. Thank you, Brandon. Going to Monday's game, well overdue to meet you boys in person. Thanks for the content as always. Let's nail these eel bastards. Go the Tigers, 100%. We're all going to be there. I think we're GA North, I think. I think. Slide into our DMs, Brandon. We'll, um, yeah, meet up and say g'day, even though it's a away game. Hopefully there's... Lots of West Tigers fans at Combank Stadium. Let's get as many people there as possible. You don't need the members' numbers. I believe the tickets are just on sale now, so snap them up. Um, yeah, no Mitchell Moses as well. Uh, Patreon, let's see. What have the guys got for us? It's a, it's a win. Um, so we'll go. Look, we might as well crack the two-hour mark tonight. Uh, Carla said, thrilled we won so comprehensively, feeling a pretty good gutted to hear that Richard has his sights set on a modern stadium as our future home ground. Cannot imagine a world where we can't watch a Tigers game at Leichhardt Oval anymore. Totally understand we need to expand our club and membership. It's crucial in moving forward. I just believe that we could have had both. Feeling really heartbroken at the thought this may well be our last year at Leichhardt Oval. 
Also, Richo is bloody wrong about women not loving Leichhardt Oval. Uh, Shane, again, so Shane's throwing us money on the Patreon, throwing us money on the Super Chats as well. Uh, great win. We bash them out of the game. It's as simple as that. I don't think I've ever seen a West Tigers game where every, every play, oh, I, I put this up. You put yeah, the yeah. same comment in the form. Yeah. Um, not one weak link on Saturday night. Welcome to West Tigers. Justin Ollum, what a debut. The pressure is on us against Para. I'm not saying we have to win, but if we get pumped 18 plus and Saturday means that nothing. Yep, yep, we've got to back it up 100%. And we, if we do beat the Eels on Monday, oh, the hot takes are coming out on Tuesday, <laughs> well, Tuesday night. <laughs> Uh, yeah, shout out to all our Patreon members. If you'd like to support the show, patreon.com forward slash Westlife, or you can become a YouTube member like uh, Gussie has. Um, right, I've Wednesday night is our next show. I've put Mitchell Moses. Sorry, Mitchell Moses. I've cursed you because I've put you as on our slide to preview the next episode, and you're out for 10 weeks. So sorry, Mitch. Um, yeah, putting the mockers on you there. I'm sure you'll blame me for that but yeah no Mitchell Moses on Monday's game and we'll preview that game on Wednesday a big thank you to the hundreds of you that joined us tonight still well over 100 we're nearly two hours in we're still above 100 but what a great celebration tonight has been boys anything before we uh yeah head off to bed and pray that my internet lasts a couple more minutes no, Josh, I'm just proud of you that you never mentioned Denver Nuggets, Golden Nuggets, Chicken Nuggets. You kept it <laughs> Rugby League. You kept it West Tigers. And, uh, look, I just I think it's just great that we all had a great weekend and we woke up Monday, you know, feeling even better and 10 feet tall and bulletproof. And uh, let's hope there are better times ahead as well. Yeah, they did win without Jokic and Murray yesterday and they're on top of the Western Conference standing. So there you go. Uh, as... You just had to add it in there, didn't you, Josh? Hey, Rob, hey, I, I, <laughs> I opened the door. I opened the door. Yeah. To my yeah. <laughs> Look, it's no, I'm just... the good teams are winding it back anyway. Playoffs start in a few weeks, so we're just posting to mid-April. Well, I'm just yeah, I'm just happy we had, we had a great weekend, and we've got a lot more pep in our step now as we head into our next game against the Eels. And if you can talk about your teams, I can talk about mine too. My Sydney Swans undefeated after three games. Uh, sitting second on the table, both Sydney teams at the top of the AFL table. Uh, it's good to be a, a Tigers and a Swans fan right now. Actually, Josh, someone said you, that to me. I know, you're gonna finish, I know you're going to finish with the theme, the, the song the boy sung in the dressing room. I just want to say two quick things about it, okay? Because I did say on the Discord that, you know, I, I disagreed a little bit with a couple of things. I'll, I'll say what they are now, So because I did promise I'd say it on the show and be very quickly. Yeah. Uh, first, firstly, I think we should have come up with a brand new song period, especially the way Shane Richardson was talking in that interview earlier where it's not about West Magpies, it's not about Balmain. But given as a second option, it's actually like quite a brilliant idea to have the West Magpies theme song with the Balmain theme song. It only needs literally three word changes and it could have been a West Tigers song. And I, I mm. just, when I heard it the other night, like I love the emotion of it. I love when Benji was ripping in at the end and it, and it gave me absolute goosebumps. But Anyone that knows a tune, like you just literally could have sw slotted in the words uh, the West Tigers instead of Western Suburbs and here come the Tigers wearing black and gold. Just take out the word wearing and put here come the Tigers black, white and gold. That's all it needs and it becomes a West mm. Tigers song. Um, you know, I, I, I get what they tried to do. I, I love the idea in concept because it's uh, recognising our heritage. But guys, it, it, it just was just like me playing an old theme song from 30 years ago. I want it to be our song. I, I've got three colours on my jersey and my team's called the West Tigers. And I just think if they just make those minor changes, literally like Elton John, you know, changing goodbye Norma Jean to goodbye England's Rose. Like that's literally, <laughs> that's literally all it is, you know. Um, you know, we are the boys from the West Tigers. Like it's not hard to do, you know, here come the Tigers, black, white and gold. Like it's just, it's just so simple. They literally got the mm. hardest part right. And they just need to put the West Tigers in there, and we've got three colours, guys. We don't have, we're not black and gold, you know. Like we've got three colours. You can't leave out the white. We've got we've got to merge everyone together and be one club. So yeah, I, I just think it was a great idea in terms of trying to recognise our heritage, but they missed the most simplest thing—just literally three word changes—and it's all better. 
quick shout Answer. out as well to Christy Hyington, who I believe was the one who came up with the idea of um, using both of the the old team songs as the new team song. Um, it's a, it's a great like idea, it. but, I, I but, but with make it about well, yeah. us. Make it about us. It makes it makes magpies. We're not magpies. We're not Balmain anymore. Make it about us. We're West Tigers. You know, we are the boys from the West Tigers. Like that's who we are. It's, you know, and and it, and it, you'd still you still feel warm and fuzzy if you're a magpie supporter, and you're still warm and fuzzy about being a Balmain supporter. It's still the same theme, but it's about us. It's not about magpies. Mm. It's not about Balmain. Anyway, that's that's my little. I, I couldn't be totally positive all episode, could I? We could have just we could have gone the like maybe the <laughs> the Daryl Braithwaite horses because they're where the West <laughs> Tigers, yeah, yeah. Too been, too too slow, too slow. <laughs> All right, uh, to everyone who joined us in tonight, the hundreds of you and the thousands of you that listen back every each and every episode. Look, of, of all the weeks, we ask for this every week, but surely please do us a favor and share it. Whatever you're listening, whatever platform you're listening, share it with a friend. You've got a friend that goes for the West Tigers. Um, share the love, share it to them. If they don't, look, they might not like it. They might might love it. They might hate you for sending it to them. But no, in all seriousness, thank you for supporting the show. Here's a little treat that we'll do every single win. And here are the West Tigers boys. No. Overly knowing the words of this song, but gives you goosebumps either way. <laughs> All right, boys. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. <laughs> for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. Please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter and facebook.com forward slash West Life Pod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash West Life and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the West Life Podcast.